This video contains two examples, and if you know how to solve radical equations, I promise you will know how to do these. Right now, I have what's called a rational exponent, and these exponents can actually be converted to radicals. So whatever's in the numerator is an exponent, and when it's one, then you just kind of ignore it. And whatever's in the denominator is the root. So the fact that I have one over five as my exponent means that this is the same exact thing as the fifth root. So if you're more comfortable seeing this in radical form, you can definitely just rewrite it in radical form or you can keep it as an exponent. You're gonna do the exact same thing either way. So keeping it as an exponent, remember when you wanna get rid of a fraction, if you're solving an equation, you can multiply by the reciprocal. So we're kind of doing the same thing here if you think of it that way. So raising an exponent to another exponent, you end up multiplying them, which is why raising both sides to the fifth power ends up canceling out the one fifth, just like it would if you decided to write this as a fifth root. So Hopefully this is pretty easy for you to do. If you want to pause the video and solve for x, go for it. 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32. Solve for x. And you should get that x is equal. I wrote 1. It should be 11. Sorry. x is 11, not 1. 33 divided by 3 is not 1. Okay, x is 11. So on to the next one. Go ahead and check your work. You should always check your work anyway, even though we raise this to an odd power. It's easy to mess up somewhere, but 11 does work. For the next one, same thing. I have an exponent, but one half is really just the square root. So if you are more comfortable writing this as a radical, go for it. Otherwise, I'm going to keep it as an exponent. And the reciprocal of one half would be two. So if I wanted to get rid of that exponent, I can multiply it by two. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm squaring both sides. That's the exact same thing I would do if I chose to write it as a square root symbol instead of the one half exponent. So if you know where this is going, pause the video and skip to the end to see if you get the same thing as me. But keep in mind that you have to do something if you raised both sides to an even power. It is very important that you do that. I said it in my last video. Um, otherwise, we are going to solve for x. And since this is a quadratic, I want to move everything to one side in order for it to equal 0. And once it equals 0, I can factor. So x squared minus x minus 12 my two numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add to negative 1 are negative 4 and positive 3. Solving for x, you set each of your factors equal to 0, and we get 4 and negative 3. And it is super important that you check your answers because we raised both sides to an even power. That is the rule. I would love for you to check your work every time anyway, but especially if you raise both sides to an even because extraneous solutions can come up. So what you're doing is you are replacing x with four, and then you're going back and replacing x with negative three and seeing if they both work. So pause the video if you wanna do that yourself. I already have it worked out, but I highly recommend that you try it first. So what I get is that four works and negative three doesn't. Now, I know people will say, well, the square root is equal to plus or minus. Think of it this way. If you put the square root of nine in your calculator, is it going to tell you that it equals negative three? No. So negative three is considered extraneous. Four is the actual solution to this problem.